Hey, um, yeah. Oh, it's hard because he always wants me to be on live, but the thing of it is, is what I'm telling my husband is, and first of all, I love my husband. I love my husband very, very much. Um, but I'm going to be real. I've been hearing a lot of things, and I take all those things with a grain of salt, and then I also take them to the throne of grace because the way I feel about it is whatever you get as a complaint or you get as a, a negative or you get as a word of warning or whatever, you're supposed to take that to the throne of grace. And I, I know sometimes my husband can be very harsh. My husband can be um, very curt, very almost rude with, but what he's talking from is his heart and passion. And I know it comes across sometimes as rudeness. It comes across sometimes as um, anger. It looks angry or standoffish. And that's not really his heart. His heart is for the people. But what I was telling him is, we are given people, and they may not be clean when we get them. And they may not be clean when we get them. And they may be arrogant when we get them. But, you know, the thing of it is, is that we're to walk into the grace and the honor and the love of God. So that if somebody comes at you and arrogantly, that's why we're told, walk that extra mile with the person. If they ask for your shirt, take your cloak off too. We turn the other cheek. We do all these things, not because we're weak but because we're strong enough to know that if I show you love when you can't show love, it might spark something, it might wake you up. And I don't wanna name names, he knows I don't name names, but there was a person we thought that was gonna come and help us. And they, at the very last minute, literally day of, hours before, like, oh, I can't make it. And his reaction was, okay, shoot, I knew that person, and I wrote them off, I'm writing them off. And in my heart, I felt, don't write them off, Send them a little note, let them know, you know, I'm thinking about them. Um, I understand and hope to see you soon. And literally days, not even that many days later, the person's heart was changed. Like the Holy Spirit went and worked on that person's heart. And they were like, hey, you know what? I'm going to make a more conscious effort to be involved in different things. And so I see that as if I had written the person off. Maybe I would have hindered the Holy Spirit and I would never want to be that I hindered the Holy Spirit. So I'm telling him that in his approach to people, whether they're arrogant, whether they don't seem to be interested, whether they don't support, whether they say they are and then they change or they just, you know, write, they don't pay you any mind. The goal is, is to keep drawing them with loving kindness, to keep showing them that I have the love of Christ because we don't know they could be arrogant today and they could be a believer, you know, a month from now or a year from now. They could be on a pedestal full of pride today and God may knock them down. And if they don't know you because you wrote them off, how, how does God use you to then help pick them back up? So I'm just helping my husband understand and helping myself to, to understand that don't always respond to what people give out right then and there. They could be hurt. They could be going through something. They may not know any other way. And then when God deals with them in the Holy Spirit way, because when you give out love to somebody who know they didn't give love, it shocks them. It's like, wait a minute. I expect her to come up one side. I expect her to tell, tell me off. I expect her to, to unfriend me. I expect her to do this. And she doesn't do that. She comes back with more love. She comes back with, I understand. She comes back with, it's okay, no worries. That's different than the world. And it makes them say, hmm, what, is, what does she have? And we know what we have. We have Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. So I'm just encouraging him. Don't worry about the people who are acting arrogant right now. Don't let that get down in your heart. It's okay to tell the people who are out there in the world, hey, you need to come out of that trap rap. You need to come out of that you know, going to the club, you need to come out of the fornication. It's okay to say that. But when a person then goes through conviction, we don't bring condemnation, we bring salvation. That's what we're about is salvation. Condemnation says you're going to hell, ain't no chance in the body. Conviction says, okay, you're doing something you need to change, but here's the good news. Jesus Christ is here. He's, he cleaned me up. He did different things for me. So, I'm just encouraging my husband 
to not allow any kind of bitterness from the past, any kind of things that he's been through, um, make him bitter toward his assigned people. Because he may have some arrogant people. He may have some, you know, I'm too good, I'm too this. I may have some people who roll their eyes. And then next year or next month, they could be dealing with something where the Holy Spirit says, it's time now for you to talk, have a nice close and close with God. It's time now for you to get your life together. And if we've removed ourselves, then when we get to heaven, what are we going to say to God? Oh, they acted this way and I wrote them off. And God's going to be like, well, here they are. They got saved, but it wasn't through you. It wasn't through your witness. It wasn't through your testimony. It wasn't through anything I gave you. I had to go find somebody else because you acted like you were too arrogant. And because they were arrogant, you were too arrogant to help them. So I'm just encouraging him to be angry a little less, to understand these people may not have a walk with Christ, that we have the answer, and that we have assigned people, and they may not be together when they come to us. They may not be together. They may have to watch us for a year. They may have to watch us for two years to see if you're real. You know, I'm going to tell this story, and I'm, again, I don't name names, but I have this pagan person, and I don't know if they're in an alternate lifestyle, and I don't understand how God keeps sending me pagan people. I'm like, God, they're pagan. I, we, we, we don't even, you know, and a lot of them have a lot of hatred against Christ, a lot of hatred against Christianity and the established church. And I don't know why he sends them to me. But at some point or another, the person will reach out to me and just have a conversation. And because... I show so much love. They trust me. And I'm not saying she converted and all of that. I'm not saying that. But she trusts me. She's like, look, if I don't know no other real doggone Christian, I know one who not only talks the faith, but walks it. And that's all I need to do. You know, whether she makes a decision for Christ is between her and Christ. But at least I showed her an example of what it really means to love God and love people. And so, you know, he keeps saying it. And I scratch my head because I'm like, well, God, you know this person is in an alternate lifestyle. And, and, and that's hard for me to have that conversation because I don't want to talk hell and damnation, but I know that's their future. And God just says, well, keep on walking. Just keep on being friendly. Just keep on being open to listening to them. And if, they, if you never see the results of your work, just remember you're sowing seeds. That's what I'm telling my husband. We're planters, we're fishers. You know, we catch them, God cleans them. We sow the seed, God grows the plant. And that's all we got to do. Okay? All right, everybody. We mm -hmm. love you, but God. No, no you're not mm -hmm. done yet? No. You know what? You're a hot mess. You don't know what? not a lover and giver show. No, it's not. It can be, though. We can go get the tripod or whatever. No, that's okay. Now, you see how many people that was looking at you and didn't want to comment. That's okay. They, they were just listening. Yeah, on and off, on and off, on and off. But the point is, and I and understand after 11 o'clock, I know people are like, look, I hear people. Y'all were just on for two hours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we were just on and for I'm two so hours. And I'm so glad. Thank God that, you know, we were on for two hours and showing y'all, like, what we're doing and what we're trying to do. Because people came back and said that we wasn't... Um, Loving on the, si the singles. Yeah, we wasn't, you know, doing anything for the singles, and we forgot about the singles. And we threw a roundtable discussion. And it was it was deep. If you... I, I'm going to try to clean it up because we had two different phones, and I'm hoping we got as much footage... But we, we touched upon some subjects tonight and something you don't hear people talking about a lot, you know, within the church or with outside of the church. Yeah, you don't hear that. You, know? you don't hear what we were talking about. Yeah. So, you know, you, know, you don't hear that within marriages. 
you know, what we, what we went through in marriage, like what we go through personally, personally, through our arguments. We don't, we don't talk, people don't talk about that because you want to be so politically correct, but you met the right person or didn't you? See, the thing about it is, <laughs> you know, so crazy. the thing about it is like, I know you was talking about arrogance and stuff. Yeah, you can hold the phone. But I know you was talking about arrogance and stuff like that. But when you deal with certain people who don't have a place to be arrogant, it bothers you a certain type of way. Like, one thing about me is you ain't got a lot of me. I know some people don't know me in order to know how to take me. But I'd rather you say, I don't want to be bothered with what you're doing than make up some type of lie. I'd rather somebody to say, well, I can't make it instead of not responding at all. And I know I put somebody on the spot earlier and they probably felt some type of way because I put two people on blast. But there are certain type of ways that you, you treat me. Now, all my life, and I could say this, there are people that hadn't took me serious because I haven't been always serious about anything, right? Mm. But this I take serious. You know, this I got, I'm very passionate. And there's very few things that I care about. You bet, and she will tell you that. I could care less. If you follow me, you know there's very few things that I could care less about. If you ain't my mama and five people in my family, five people who support the SSS movement, I could care less anymore. So, and I know that ain't Jesus, I know, you know, things like that. But when you've been hurt by a certain type of, when you've been hurt by a certain type of way, you can love people, but you can love them from a distance. You can love them with a, what the Bible say about the spoon. Um, I don't know if it says that, but the saying is a long-handed spoon. Yeah, That's treat them with a long-handed yeah. spoon. Uh, right. You know, That's I give you a same. hug. I could know you. I could know who you are, but not know you. You don't even like to do that because you tell me sometimes you're being hypocritical. After what you said about the person, and then you're going to smile on their face. So you don't even really like to do that too much. No, I don't. So, but but the point is, like, you know, and I, I try to hold off because it's a, it's a bunch of people that I messaged and stuff like that, that really rubbed me the wrong way and I could have went off on them. And there was a bunch of people that I've come in and I could have went off on them, but I had to hold myself and I had to say, God, please hold my tongue because you know I'm frustrated. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to go off on them or whatever. So God, please control the situation. So God is working on me because half of y'all fake. <laughs> Then you would then ask me to say all of what I said. No, yeah, but you, I'm just... But the whole thing is, if the person is fake today, if the person is a tomorrow. liar today, yeah. if the person is a thief or a murderer mm -hmm. today, Don't mean put God in any me. other sinful nature thing, or not, you know, carnal-minded thing, does not mean that the person does not need to see your witness because your witness is a standard against where they are. And it does not It does mean some of it you can call out, but some of it you literally are standing as a beacon of yeah. light to what the person does. And it doesn't require a angry or bitter response because you know that God is in the cleanup business. He could literally take that person and change them in a short amount of time or within a year. And you'll come back and be like, is that the same person that was da 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 da? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is you don't want to write off those people because it may be your assignment. But is it okay to call them fake and just love them at the same time? <laughs> it's okay to call them fake, but when you, let me tell you what happens when you keep wanting to describe people. You speak that thing more into their life. You know what I'm saying? You speak it more into life. You're fake, you're fake, you're fake, you're fake. Instead of speaking what we know God has for them, which is life and life more abundantly. Okay, and that's true. 
But let's look at people like Marcus Gill, for instance. I don't know if you read my Facebook Live. Oh, I'm sorry. No. My, my Facebook Live earlier, whether you went over it. But when you talk about abundance and stuff like that, half of these people ain't going to make it. Hell, I might not even make it. But this, this is the thing. Since we don't know who, we don't know who, we don't know when people are leaving up out of here, would it not be to the best to make sure that they see an example of Christ? What I'm trying to do is I'm saying if a person comes to me and they're fake today, I can recognize the faith. That's some fruit. But I also know what God has in store for that person. And it's not fakeness. It is not false fruit. It's not an empty tree with nothing but leaves. God has life and fruit and abundance. And so I'm looking at you and saying, yeah, I see your fake. Yeah, I see you're walking in weakness and in lack. You may think you got a lot, but you're walking in weakness and lack. So you're saying don't tell them. Like how you feel about them, just I think I think it's okay to say it, but I don't think it's okay to dwell. Like if I came across a person who lied, I'm like, you're a liar. But you know, there's so much more God has for you. Why are you even thinking this way? Why do you think this is great? Well, I like doing what I do. Okay, that's great. So you saying my issue is I constantly, continuously call them a bunch of wannabe arrogant th people and a bunch get, of fakes. Yeah, I think you because get when I talk, I talk in general now. I know. If you're talking about posting, I post in general. But my thing, if, you, if, if every day you find a reason to talk about the fake in general people, it's too much. It's too much. You know, we know there's going to be fake people. You may never run out of fake people. You may never run out of people who are going to hell. But my whole thing is, are we trying to just say, here's a doorway to hell? Just like when I said certain people are doing right. They're boycotting certain things. Mm -hmm. But what do we hear about all the time? The, boy, boycott. the place to boycott. We Instead just hear about the place to boycott. Yeah. Boy, yeah. I can tell you almost the address of the place to boycott. Because they're there every Saturday. They talk about it. We're going to be there. They talk about Friday. We're going... And I know more about that place, where it is, what then, shopping center it looks like, than where I here. should be going. Yeah. And so there's nothing wrong with pointing out a place to boycott as long as you are now providing on even louder basis places you should go. That's what I'm saying. So you're saying as far as me, I concentrate on the fake people. Mm -hmm. Than the real people. I'm, you concentrate on where more they are now. More of the fake people Thank you. You than can... more of the real people, like Maria Phillips, uh, like Charles Mc... No, I'm not saying fake. I'm I saying real to people. Say, about to call people. Real right? people. Okay. Okay, you... like Maria F no, Phillips. No, no. You even with Felita, the... uh, God. Felita God. God. Uh, Tanisha Ingram. Ingram. These... Um, those are real people. Okay, um, but what I'm saying is Ladosha. Right. Those are real people. Hold on, hold on. Oh, he um, got some more. He got some more real people. Yay. Um, you know, I guess Charles McMurray is real. Right. Real. Um, that's so raven. I really don't know her, but I can say she's, you know. But you look, she's, she's a working coming process. Around. Yeah. She's a work in okay. process. She um, wasn't that way when we first met her. So this is what I'm saying is when you have the person who's a work in progress, who one mom was like, child, I ain't got for time for that. And tonight, her conversation, which was so different. So if I cut myself off because when she was sucking her teeth, maybe rolling her eyes, and I'm not saying she did that, but I'm just saying if that was her personality six months ago, and I cut myself off, I really want to be part of her testimony. I really want to be part of saying God used me to be in your life. So there's nothing wrong with calling out the fake people. But we don't leave them there. We don't keep calling them out. We can... Yeah, I think once I call them out one time. One time, move fake. on. Can I just say it one time to each individual? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Say, now no, we're trying to work asking. out what he can I need say. permission. No, you don't need permission from me. To sit there because me. if my wife gives me permission. I'm not giving To call it. you fake. No. And I can get you away get with calling you fake. Anyway, because the reason, the reason okay. why I don't call you fake and the reason why I don't say it to your face that you're fake, you're arrogant, and you're making a fool out of yourself is the protection of my wife. Listen, listen. When we started when when we first started dating, I was telling her how Very protective yes, he I was. was of her he was. because half of you fake phony people, I knew how you would take Ooh. it. 
you know how but my thing is you keep talking to them in their present state and I don't care if they were fake for a whole year I keep looking toward what they could be in Christ and yeah. I want to be around I'll when that transformation I know and I'll I know be it's trying. I know. <laughs> give me a kiss I'll try because, because you be try. trying I know and I'll I know try. <laughs> Just you saying that makes me love you so much more because no, but a lot I of try, times I try, people Lord. don't even want to say they try. Yeah, I try. I really want to sit there and show you as much love and be in front of your face and smile in front of your face <laughs> no, but you without okay. saying something smart to expose your fakeness. <laughs> you I don't, promise you, don't you, have to, you don't have to be. No, no, I'm not asking you to be a hypocrite. I'm not asking you to become as fake as they are. But what yeah. I'm saying is. Once I know a person has, an, say, an arrogancy, or I know something, yeah. I note it. I like may say it once, and then yeah, and yeah. then I'm like, I'm, I got, I can't stay focused on the sin. I can't stay focused on the sin. The gospel and the and the salvation that we have through Christ is so powerful to me. I cannot stay focused on the sin. I know sin can't survive where grace is. The Bible says where sin was, grace doth more abound. That means wherever sin is, I don't care what quantity it's in, grace is actually more. It'll always, it'll actually grow, abound. Abound means it's actually going to get bigger. So I focus on the grace. I, I, I say I see sin, focus on the grace. Say I sin, I see a, a, a person arrogant, I focus on the fact that God can heal that person's heart. Whatever I see that is of a sinful carnal nature, I am focusing on the abounding, overwhelming grace that we have through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's my good news. That's my gospel. And so that may not be easy for you to do. And I'm it's even not, in the process of, of accepting it's not, that it's not easy for you to do. It's not. Because cause with me, like I swear I, I be trying to hold my tongue oh, yeah, I know. and just say the right thing and I just can't and he'd be like, say yeah, the right I just thing. So I got to say something in their face. real smart. And did, and I'm like, I don't know if you really get it, but I be making it, you know, seem like I know you're lying out the bottom of your teeth. <laughs> hey, you're 50 years old. you 50 years old. Uh -oh. You're still lying. Once last week. You was hurt, you know, you was hurt, so you couldn't come to my event because you was hurt. You was going through some type of sickness. But then the next day you was at a party, just like you at a party now. I'm like, don't you see I watch you? How stupid do you really think I am? And do you think really God just sits there and honors that buffoonery no, you post? He, you he post doesn't. like three times a day, God, 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 God. And stuff like that. But then you're going to sit there and lie in front of my face. And then post right in front of my face. Do you know how stupid you sound? And then got the nerve to sit there and brag about what college you went to. And I'm like, are you really sick? Well, my father would say, yes, they're sin sick. They're sin sick because sin will blind you. Sin Aggie will literally pride. blind you to your huh? Eggy pride. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Sin will literally <laughs> blind you to the fact that you're committing a sin. You will literally think you're fine. You'll literally think you're going in the right direction. You're doing everything right. And that's why God the Bible says, Jesus says, Y'all gonna get up there one day and be wanting to puff out your chest and walk up and say, Hey Heavenly Father, how you doing? And, and he's gonna you. be like Depart, man. I don't know who in the world you think you are. Hey, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. I did this and I did that. And he's like, let me show you some things that you didn't do that I sent your way. Some people I sent. And this is why I'm very careful. Because I don't want to be in that number where I rejected and got rid of people and rolled my eyes and walked away. And God said, no, I was just sending you a hard case. I was just sending you a hard case. And you just, you didn't Take the time. I swear I don't. Hmm? I swear I don't. You don't want. It. If I can't take it here on earth, what makes you think I'll take it in hell? No, we're not going to. Well, I know that, but I'm just but saying. But I'm just saying, like, if God, like, I talk about it all the time. Okay, like, when we went to 50, if we was going to 5400, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we went to holler at Chris Burgess or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'd have to go through the security guard, right? 
let's say Chris Burgess or Tom Tom puts us on the guest list or tell people to let, uh, uh, you know, we got to go through that security guard to get the Tom Tom, mm -hmm. right? On a Tuesday night, we got to go to 5400 who texts me all the time, but ain't never been to one event. But this is the point, though. You got to, like, you got to get through that security guard in order to get the Tom Tom mm -hmm. for, for that event. You know what I'm saying? So imagine, like, if Tom Tom, which he did me like that before, act like he don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. When I try to get through the security guard in order to holler at Tom Tom. Mm -hmm. So how would you think in heaven, when you go to heaven, right? And you up in heaven's gate and you trying to talk to Jesus about entering heaven's gate or going through the angels in order to go through heaven's gate, right? Right. So then next thing you know, you go in there and you're like, man, I want to talk to God. But you got to go through Jesus because the Bible says in order right. to get to him, I'm you got to go through me. Yep. No man you got to go through Father, me. So, through me. yeah. So you denied Jesus all this time on earth. The hell with Jesus, hell Jesus, blah, 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 blah. The anger, frustration, or whatever stupidity that you're going through, right? So the next thing you know, he like, man, you ain't, you denied me on earth. What makes you think that you're going to try to get through me in order to get to him and you denied me on earth? Yeah, but you know, it's worse than that. So that's somebody who says, I don't want Jesus. Okay. You know, they know they, they literally know that they're facing judgment, but we're talking about people who sit in the pew. I know you're talking about people who sit in the church every day. They get their two hour, you know, what I call their two hour membership. They give that, they, um, they, they, they go and they serve food, maybe to the homeless, you know, there's constant pictures of them online where they've, delivered something or they they gave this homeless person Making something, you good. know, and so you see all of these accolades down here and they think, hey, I got it made. And when they get there, Be there's surprised. a rude awakening of, oh, yeah, you were in that building, but your heart was so far from me. Oh, yeah, you were in that building. I saw you out with the homeless, but you, your next door neighbor, you acted like you didn't see him. You see, so that's what I'm trying to say. We don't know who are people who are assigned to us. We don't know who our assignment is. And so the Bible says sometimes we have entertained angels unaware. We've got angels and we don't even know we're entertaining them. So you got to be careful because what might be an assignment, what might be an assignment, we could turn our back on. And God was like, that was the very person I was saying. I don't think I'd turn my back on them. I'd just constantly call them fake in their face. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't turn my back. Don't think that no, I would. No, and I mean, that's true. You, don't think you're not that, that kind of person. I wouldn't you're not a, turn my back on you. don't have that kind of heart. But I'll make sure that you know that I know you fake. But uh, what I'm I saying know that you full if of every it. time I pick up this phone and all I hear is fake, 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 just like I said about the place that's being boycotted, if all I hear about is that place, that place, that place, I'm not even going to name the place because I don't intend for you Misha's to know about girl, No, I don't, that's the whole point. Misha's. I don't want, you're, you're missing the point. I don't want them to know that name. I want them to know the name of the place they need to go. Well, there's too many places. No, there's not. The, on that list, there's about six. And so what I'm going to try to do is every time that we go to boycott, I'm going to put the list up. Because what's the point of telling me not where to go when you don't tell me where to go? So my thing is, if you talk about the one fake person, I need you to talk about... Well, God can relieve you from that fakeness, what life is without being fake. No, if you talk about one arrogant thing, I need you to go ahead and point to a life without arrogance and what it means with freedom. You don't have to. I need you to balance it. That's what I'm talking about. Balance. And you don't think I try to? I give people shout outs. Uh, you know, We're just getting like there. We're getting there. You're you know, getting I'm there. You're trying to get there. You You're know. getting there. He's getting there, people, because that's to, true, because you yeah. used to just be constant. Yeah, fake, 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 I fake, 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 call you, call out the fake Oh, people. God. I used to be like, what are we talking about? Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you're arrogant, corporate America. But, I mean, it used to be so hard. And I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. A thousand pounds of makeup on. It may be that that person has it on now 
and you don't know what God is walking them through. So I'm saying point to well, where God, they need to go. And God and the Heavenly Father, please release them from a thousand pounds. That's a good start. Let's pray. Let's please, pray Heavenly that Father, they will be released. I want to pray right now. Do you? Yeah, I want to pray. I want to pray. pray. You want to pray for them? You know, not to just call them out, but to pray for their salvation. Yeah, I want to pray for their souls. Thank you, Everybody Jesus. that's out there on Facebook Thank Live you, right now, I want to pray for your soul. Everybody that's out there, the press box, 5400, and yes, I'm calling out your names, because the reason why, especially 5400, I'm going to really pray over you. Um, who else? NC Tavern. Even though I ain't never really approached press box and, and NC Tavern like that, um, hey, you know, they always, you know, it is what it is. I saw that, I saw that owner at NC Tavern beat up that girl, one of the owners. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, did you remember me talking about it? And they beat up that girl, one of the owners of that, of that, um, wow. of NC Tavern beat up a girl there and y'all still going to support them, you know, but y'all boycotting Misha's, but it was an Indian or, or Asian beating the living daylights out of African American female pulling her hair hitting her in the face and everything. If you don't believe me, 300 will tell you. DJ 300, he'll tell you for himself. Yeah. And I thought it was very sickening. But y'all sitting there boycotting Misha's and everything else. But I'm going to tell you something. And I talked about this earlier in love. I really appreciate what they're doing in Chicago. I love it. Standing up against black-on-black -black crime. I love what the black community is doing. Lock them all up. Justice, no justice, no peace in our own community. Lock them up. Get rid of them. I love it. Now. I thought we were going to pray. Yeah, we are. Before you have no fun. Oh, I'm good. I'm good as long as I'm with you. You know, and one thing about it is I, I appreciate you being open in our marriage and I appreciate you being open with realness in order to show singles that it takes realness in order to be married. Mm -hmm. You know, no man wants to be with a woman who's not truthful and fake. And women can see through men in a heartbeat, but women fall for the emotional side, if anything. So if they stick with you, that's the woman to stick with because I call you fake in a heartbeat. I punch you in your face, punch you in your chest in a heartbeat. Next, God to forgive me, but that woman what? to stick with you. It's <laughs> crazy, you know. <laughs> that, that woman. And after our that, conversation about mental health to tonight, with you. I feel so bad when I call you crazy, but you are as crazy as a bed bug. Uh, you are yeah. crazy. But but um, you know, I punch you dead in your face. And I ask God to forgive me, but that woman will still stick with you after I punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. Get that. But dear Heavenly Father, in the name yes, of Jesus, Lord. thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. As we're here Amen. having a good time, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that after every Facebook Live, we're able to come together and we're able to pray to you, Heavenly Father. Yes, to show social media, Heavenly Amen. Father, God, Heavenly yes, Father, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Even though social media is filled with the devil, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. of people going live, buying out the bar, Heavenly Father, or going to see two mm -hmm. chains in a wheelchair, or, or a young Dolph who got shot up, a hundred whose truck got shot up a hundred times, Heavenly Father, and people are risking their lives in order to sell their souls to the devil, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Even though selling their souls to go see Jay-Z in November, October, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to fill out seats, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the people that you bring to us, Heavenly Father, yes, for do. salvation, Heavenly Father. We yes, thank Lord. you for the numbers, Heavenly Father, that you have brought. It said two or more that's Our gathered. Father. The Holy Spirit shows up, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. So we put it on live for people to see the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, mm, and how you, the Holy Spirit is so transparent, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you don't have to act 
holier than thou, Heavenly Father, being mm -hmm. holy, Heavenly Father. And we were holy, Heavenly Father, being transparent, going on different yeah, subjects, Heavenly so Father, you, talking about you, Heavenly Father, and yes. putting you in the midst of every subject or every issue that we came Thank across, you, Heavenly Lord. Father, you, in order to come with a Put solution, Heavenly Father. It, yes. So I pray, Heavenly Father, for everybody, even Amber, who asked me to pray for her, Heavenly Father, Heavenly last Father, night. Yeah. Heavenly Father, yes. we pray that you cover her cover spirit. Her. If she's she out tonight her. getting drunk, Heavenly Father, yeah. or out yeah. tomorrow night, Heavenly Father, please cover her, Heavenly Father, as she yes, asked so. me to pray for her, Heavenly Father, but didn't answer the phone call when I reached back out to her, Heavenly mm, Father, Lord, about her, prayer call. Her Please spirit. touch her soul right touch now, wherever mind, she Lord. is. Heavenly Father, touch her mind, Heavenly Father. Anything that anybody is going through as they're watching me, Heavenly Father, as they're watching Judy, Heavenly Father, being together, Heavenly Father, no makeup, no wig, no nothing, Heavenly Father, just the two of us, Heavenly yes, Father, Lord, wide yes, open, Lord. just coming to ask for you, Heavenly Father, and Be coming to show Lord. you, Heavenly Father. I pray for every radio personality, Heavenly Father, in the Charlotte area that's probably dealing with some type of anger issue, Heavenly Father, or some type of arrogance, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, to where they can't abide by you and what you want them to do, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover their souls, Heavenly Father. Not saying no names, Heavenly Father, but I know that they're going through battles as I watch them, Heavenly Father. Yes, and I pray that you cover them, Heavenly Father. Show them the light, Heavenly oh Father. Lord, Heavenly Show Father. them yes, the God. love of Jesus Christ, yes, Heavenly Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. Through what we're trying to do, Heavenly Father. Through 105.3, Heavenly Father. 101.9, Heavenly Father. Yes, Power 90 Eight, Heavenly Father, all of those, even 100.9, Heavenly Father, as they go through working, Heavenly Father, but who knows outside of work how they are, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover every news channel, Heavenly Father, in the Charlotte and surrounding area, Heavenly yes, Father, that might be dealing with selling their soul in order to make a dollar, Heavenly Father, for what they went to school with. I pray that you cover them, Heavenly Father, through your blood, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, I pray Lord. that you cover everybody who's bothered, Heavenly Father, with being single, Heavenly Father, and don't know where to go, so they're choosing the press box, they're choosing NC Tavern, they're choosing uh, 5400, Heavenly Father, in order to get their light, Heavenly Father, or any club, Heavenly Father, in order to get the light, Heavenly Father, please cover them, Heavenly Father, yes, because we I know see. that they don't have to get drunk and get loose and listen to mumbo-jumbo rap trap music, Heavenly Father, in order to feel you, Heavenly Father, yes, because a lot of lying on you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, saying that they're blessed by you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, but sleeping with three or four women at a time, Heavenly Father, promoting sleeping with three or four women at a time, Heavenly Father, promoting selling drugs, Heavenly Father, mm. but can tell that it's you, can say that it's you that's given them that mm. gift, Heavenly Father. Mm. It's you that's selling their records, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover them, Heavenly Father, in order Thanks to get Lord. closer Thanks to you, Lord. Heavenly Father. Not yes. for the bitterness, but for the betterness, Heavenly Father, amen in the name amen. of Jesus. Yes, so I Lord. pray that you cover each and every one souls, Heavenly Father, that's watching us right now, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover these churches and these pastors that's praying prosperity, Ooh. Heavenly Father, over money, Heavenly Father, over finances, Heavenly Father, but not saving souls, Heavenly Father, wow. not being Jesus. reminded, Jesus. Heavenly Father. They just want to be covered, Heavenly Father, with just being just being inspirational so that people can pay their tithes and offerings, Heavenly Father. But we know that's not of you, Heavenly Father. So I pray that you touch every pastor 
whether they have the numbers or not, Heavenly Father, mm. to follow what you want them to, to do, do within what your you will, Heavenly say. Father, yes, and Lord. quit lying. We know what you say about liars, Heavenly Father. We know how you feel about liars, Heavenly Father. So I pray that you cover Marcus Gill's soul, Heavenly Father. I call their names out, Heavenly Father, as I get bothered, Heavenly Father. Mm. So I pray that you cover Marcus Gill, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover those who need to be covered. In Jesus' Jesus name, name, amen. 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 That was wonderful. Thank, Thank you for you. that prayer. Thank you for praying for people and, you know, calling them to repentance, calling them to Christ. That's the goal. That's the goal. So, say we love you. But God loves you. But God loves you.